Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to the Adam Thompson Show. Cutting edge. You just told you to shut the f*** up. No holds Thanks for not calling me a liar, son of a bitch. The latest trending topics, legal cases, and social issues. In your face commentary on all subjects. Adam Thompson. You can't handle the truth. Adam Thompson brings his 25-year experience as a high-profile criminal and civil trial lawyer and gritty New York street smarts and attitude to the studio. Real Those who want respect, give respect. You never know what he'll say next. This is the Adam Thompson Show. Here's your host, Adam Thompson. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Adam Thompson Show. Thanks for joining us, as always. We appreciate you visiting and spending some time with us. We have a very special edition tonight as we have a sports exclusive. That's right, folks. If you've been checking the social websites and our media pages, you know that the Adam Thompson Show, nowhere else, just only here, not ESPN, Sports Center, the Yes Network, any Major League Baseball Network, no other sports station. We have an exclusive for the first time speaking out since the Roger Clemens hearings and trial, none other than Brian McNamee. Yes, we had the ability to get together with Brian and speak with him extensively for over an hour and a half about everything relating to Brian's involvement with the use of steroids and illegally banned substances, his role as a trainer, working with over 300 professional ball players, including Roger Clemens, Andy Pettit, Chuck Knobloch, his uh, interactions while a, a sports trainer with the Toronto Blue Jays, and of course with the New York Yankees. You're going to be hearing a lot of information that's never come out before with details about the use of banned substances by players like Chuck Knobloch, Roger Clemens, and Andy Pettit, but also... Did the Yankees know about it? Did General Manager Brian Cashman know? Did Joe Torre know? Well, you're going to find this out. Uh, we're going to get the interview in a minute, and it's a long one. It's going to be the only thing we're covering in today's show. We're not going to be taking calls, and we're not going to be doing the rant even. But I want everybody to listen in. Please post your comments or questions on our Facebook page or on the YouTube channel. But I do urge everyone, when this is over, please visit our website, www.attorneyadamthompson.com. Go there, and of course, from there, you can find out everything that we do legally, uh, the cases we handle. But more importantly, you will find our links to our YouTube channel, to our Twitter account, and to our Facebook page. Please go to these three social media sites. Listen to the complete interview, which will be at least another half an hour to 40 minutes that will not air live here, where you'll be able to listen to the complete interview with facts and, and, and information and forms of evidence that you never heard about before, including what's going on with the present trial that Brian's involved in still with Roger Clemens in that defamation suit, and Andy Pettit just recently testifying in that case, giving a deposition. You're going to find out stuff here for the first time that you have not heard discussed anywhere. So please listen to the interview live here. Go to hear the complete interview thereafter at our website. Remember our YouTube channel, Adam Thompson Law. Also tweet us, send us your comments, and please post. With that said, we're going to now get to the interview with none other than Brian McNamee. Brian McNamee is a former New York City police officer, personal trainer, and strength and conditioning coach for, with Major League Baseball. He was notable and known testifying against former New York Yankees pitcher Roger Clemens and appearing and testifying before a congressional committee on the use of banned substances and specifically steroids in 2008. Uh, with no further ado, let's get to that interview. Ryan, if you could cue up the Brian McNamee interview. Brian, welcome to the show. I'm very excited to have you on because we all know you've been at the top of a major uh, issue that's been surrounding baseball for many years now and some of the most high-profile players. So let me just start by uh, welcoming you to the show. Yeah, how are you doing? Doing great. All right. Now listen, there's a lot to cover here, so let's start off with, I know right now you have a pending defamation case that's still pending in Brooklyn Federal Court. What, what stage is that case at presently? Right now, that, that case is, uh, we're going through the ancillary um, stages of it. It's, um, we're doing depositions with uh, some big players, um, meaning 
uh, people that, that, that have something to do with the case. The, the major players, obviously, are me and Clemens, um, and we're actually just waiting um, for me and Clemens to get deposed, and what we're doing is we're waiting for the magistrate. Uh, the magistrate judge had, had actually ruled that, we, that my team, my, the home team, gets all the paperwork from Clemens. Clemens is going through his uh, procedures, which is his, what's allowed to him to fight that. He doesn't want us to get all that paperwork. Um, so he's going through the stages. He fought it. He lost. He fought it. He lost. So I think he's in his last stage. My, my team is going to get the, that paperwork, uh, which are his emails and his text messages um, that were he's fighting to, to hide. He doesn't want he doesn't want to make that to be made public. And so we're in the last stage of that. And then once we get all the paperwork, then me and Clemens are going to get the post, and then it should move forward as scheduled. Now, the paperwork that you're talking about, in case the listeners out there are unfamiliar with this, in the criminal case that went on, a lot of Clemens' background, a lot of his um, information that would affect his credibility or his character was kept out of the criminal case, and the jury never oh. got to hear about any of that. Now, yeah. in a civil trial, uh, this is all admissible for the most part, and this will be coming in. So what kind of materials are we expecting to hear that were not allowed in the criminal case, but now will be allowed in the civil case? Bro, well, I don't know. It's a great, great question, and it's a great um, point. Um, as far as I know, and and actually I can be a lawyer right now, um, it's, it's the criminal case from my lawyer's 100 years of experience never saw a defendant get as much stuff ruled for for the criminal, Clemens being the criminal, because he, he was the criminal at trial for him. And everything was kept out of the criminal case. The judge ruled so much in favor of Clemens. And in 100 years of experience, my lawyers have never seen it ever done like that. But what Clemens doesn't want is in the civil trial, he doesn't want these, these pieces of paper, these information, these dialogues out. This is going to ruin him. This is going to ruin him. And what I, what I would like is that I would like it to be out sooner because I want the, the Hall of Fame voters right now, they have the ballot, and he's coming up for the Hall of Fame. He's on the ballot. And I would like, I would like them to reread and revisit this, this situation, what he did to the American people, what he did to children, what he did to me. Um, so Clemens is fighting really hard not to let these pieces of papers, the dialogues between his lawyers, his agents, his PR people out. Because I read them, and they are, they are hysterical. They are really embarrassing, they're hysterical, and it sees a desperate man being desperate. That's what, okay, it, that's now, what, that's what it is. Now, obviously, these were kept out of the criminal case by motions filed by his lawyers. Now that it's going to be coming out in the civil case, you just said many of these emails, a lot of this information is hysterical. It's, I'm sure it's shocking in many ways. Um, Give us a tidbit of some of that. What, what are some of these things we're going to find out? Let's get juice, the juice of it. Uh, the juice is a, a desperate man trying to hold on to his legacy. And a desperate man, it's really desperate and embarrassing. Um, like, are we talking about can I give you a piece? I can't, I can't legally tell you what they said because I've seen them. Um, I can't tell you that legally. I can tell you that it's a desperate man. He is a desperate man. And well, it's a well, communication between him specific, and his people. Without getting without into, going, into specifics, are we, should we expect, though, to see emails or text messages where he basically admits or in some way reinforces or supports or corroborates your statements that he did use? I, I'm i pretty sure, yes. I'm pretty sure. Will the public see them? Yeah. Will you see that? that it, all, it all depends. It depends on how you can how you can read into the emails. Yes, you you will see that he did use steroids. Yes, he was a steroid user. Um, it depends on how you you can massage the dialogue. Um, if you know what I'm saying. 
Um, did he come out and say you used steroids in the emails and, and correspondence with these people? No, not really. But you can see the desperate act, the desperate version of um, you can massage or interpret that he did. Yes, well, well he you're, did. you're saying that it's your interpretation with that of your, your legal team that if you look at the full context of all these text statements and emails and look at them all together from both sides, what the person he's talking to is saying and the responses and so on, that that should be the conclusion that we should be able to come up with, that he clearly um, was using and steroids. Anybody with an IQ above 90 would be able to interpret that. Okay. Now, now, I'm not sure Clemens does, but um, well, yes, anybody, now, with now, a, now, anybody, from, with a, anybody with a grammar school education could, could interpret that. Now, apart from the, just the, 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 the illegal ban use of substances claim that we're talking about, you know, the other information that's going to be coming out at the trial are a lot of credibility issues, such as infidelity. You know, Clemens was actually, you know, accused of running around on his wife, and that this was obviously kept out of the criminal case. But when you're talking in a civil trial where someone's credibility and their ability to be honest, truthfulness, which is an issue, uh, is going to come out in this case. So how much of these other topics should we expect to hear about in the civil case involving these other areas and the affairs that he had that he supposedly times tried to cover 100. up? Time, times what you know by 100. So it's going to be the floodgates are opening up. Yeah. It's, it's a really it's a sad situation for baseball. It's a sad situation for him and his family. Um, I did have a good relationship with his family. I, I watched his kids grow up. Um, if I was him, I would look to settle, but he's not because he's not built like that. Uh, it's really sad. It's going to be sad. Well, we're talking about, about now uh, about not just using banned substances, which may keep uh, Roger out of the Hall of Fame, but, you know, character is also an issue with people getting into the Hall. I mean, that's the primary reason George Steinbrenner hasn't been put in yet, because they're saying issues based on past conduct may keep him out. So do you think that when you look at the accusations with the, the use of illegal substances and now the fact that he might have lied about it and covered it up, but also these other areas that are going to come out that will, you know, really look pretty poorly on his character, do you think Roger Clemens is ever going to get that call to the hall? All right, Adam, when was the last time you heard of Roger Clemens' name? Only associated with your cases now. Okay, but when was the last time? It was you a have, long time. Right. Roger Clemens, one, I really don't think he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Two, nobody knows him better than I do. Nobody. Not even his wife. Three, we go, we go through the history of the game. What? And I have, I, have, I have, you know, we are not enemies. I don't wish harm on Clemens, you know, but what he did to the game. What he did to the children, George Mitchell, what Mitchell did to the children, what Major League Baseball did, all these factors factor in to my opinion of Roger Clemens. Roger Clemens does not deserve to be in the Hall of Fame because of what he did. He could have been the poster boy for, hey, he could have just, he could have just said, hey, I just try to get healthy, I try to do this, I try to do that, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. You know what? The people would have loved him, they would have forgave him. And he could have been, you know, he has these charities, supposedly he does. Supposedly he does these charities, which I think is just, you know, an earmark for him to save money on his taxes. But, you know what? He could have went about it so much better, so much differently, just, just manned up. If he manned up, instead of being a coward, he was a coward. He became a coward, and he chose to fight it. Because, you listen, I trained over 400 professional athletes. Look at the people. that I, I taught 300 athletes out of doing steroids. Unfortunately, I made mistakes, Adam. I, made, I chose to do this because, one, it was my job. Two, I got caught up in it. Three, I shouldn't have done it, and I did and I made mistakes, and I'm paying for it. I paid dearly for it. It cost me my marriage, my children, my, my, my career. It cost me everything. So am I a bitter man? No, not anymore, but I'm being honest. So getting back to the George Steinbrenner example, no, Clemens made, he chose that path. He does not deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. He does not.
I believe Clemens took steroids since high school. I believe he took them in high school, college, to get into college, and he continued to take them, and then he brought me into it. And well, that I was going to be decision. that, that was going to be my next question. I, I I'm I'm curious. Two things I wanted to follow up based on your last answer. First of all, people always hear about steroids use. You said you you worked with with literally hundreds of players. You, you're very well known as a professional trainer. You have a great background in that. First of all, so to avoid any confusion for people in this area. When, when a player takes steroids or these illegal banned substances, what degree or level does it really enhance their ability to, to perform? Because let's just take a, a great player like a Derek Jeter. He's phenomenal. There's never been accusations that he's ever used. You look at his numbers, you're impressed. He does everything, works hard day to day. What if someone like him just said, you know what, I'm going to go on a regiment, I'm going to start taking steroids or these illegal banned substances like an A-Rod or, or Clemens was doing, how would his game improve? Would he go from 15, 20 homers up to 50? Like, how, how much of an impact does it really have? I actually, um, in my my experience, my and and first of all, let everybody know that I am a well well taught, well well um, vetted strength and conditioning coach. I I have masters. Um, I have a Ph.D. that I got in Toronto that they don't believe I got it, but I got it. Um, I also have all of the accreditations to be a strength coach. I also played baseball at a very high level, which also enabled me to get into with these guys. I can, I can catch 95-mile-an-hour fastball. I can hit a 95-mile-an-hour fastball. I can throw a 90-mile-an-hour fastball. I, I just played at a very high level, but I also got all the degrees from all local schools, St. John's, Long Island, Columbia. I got all these degrees. I got all these certifications. I'm sanctioned on this and that and that. So I also believed, which I made the mistake, I never took a drug, an illegal drug, until I was 33 years old. And then I'm 46 now. I believed that I needed to know what to play. I needed them to be honest with me. If you're going out drinking, taking drugs, narcotics, steroids, I needed to know what it did to the body because I did the training regimen. So I did take steroids twice. I did take amphetamines a couple of times. What I believe is, one, the amphetamines are more performance enhancing than steroids. Two, steroids, you know, I think with Jeter, and I I would consider um, friendly with Jeter. Uh, we, me and him spoke in personal levels, uh, at very personal levels. Um, are we buddies? No, we're not. Um, do I call him up? No, I don't. Do I know Jeter? I was the first person ever to throw batting practice to Jeter his first year um, in 95, uh, in the spring training, actually. When they kept him extra, they kept they brought him back to look at him. Um, I threw to him. He was the first rounder. He was a bonus baby. Uh, he was basically a 160 pound kid with an afro. Uh, he was pretty funny. Uh, me and Posada used to me and Posada were very close. But you know what? With the steroids, it all it all really depends. Like yes, the performance enhancing. Amphetamines were more, on a day-to-day -day base, basis, more performance enhancing um, than steroids. I was the one that got that got amphetamines banned. I got them banned. Sealy didn't want to do it. I pushed. I pushed the media to to, uh, to ban them. And uh, John Heyman, who was working for Newsday at the time, got them banned. Um, because originally, amphetamines were not banned when they in after O three, but. Would Jita hit 50 home runs? No. Jita would just be healthier, stronger. Not, you know, you're not, you know, like we talk about Brady Anderson hitting 50 home runs. We don't know. I was friendly with Brady. I was friendly with his friends. You don't know. You, you know, Jita's not a home run hitter. He's not. He, he's, well, a, well, he's, yeah, a he's a single, single couple. He's a gap hitter. You hear, you hear the, 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 the statements with, like, Bonds and the Maguires and the Sosas. You know, they could hit homers before. And, you know, they had home runs. Thirty to forty would be great, but when you start getting into the seventies, it starts to make people wonder. Wow, thirty. But they had, but Adam, they had home run swings. They were back legged. They were back legged swingers. They were all or nothing. They struck out a lot too, though. They struck out a lot too. And guys that strike out a lot of home runs, 
Cheat is not a strikeout. He's not a strike. He's a contact hitter. He's not going to be a home run hitter. Um, would he bulk up a little bit? Yeah. Um, but like Clemens, Clemens took steroids. Um, he took enough steroids, but just not enough to get like you would think he took steroids. He did put on a lot of weight. He was always fat. He was like, Clemens was fat. He didn't start working out hard until he took steroids. So and he didn't like start Clemens, taking steroids until him? the middle of the season. How does it impact a guy like Clemens then? Does well, it make him throw it impacted his fastball. It impacted his, it impacted his workouts. And it, it made him work out harder. It's like Adam. If if me and you, if me and you are buddies and we're hanging out and we we hear this new protein powder and we go to the gym three nights a week and we're taking this protein powder, you know what? The protein powder makes you work out harder. Hey, let me see if it works. Let's see if we can put on ten pounds of muscle. Let's see if we can look good in the lobby. They call it. But, you know, Clemens never looked good in the lobby. He was always heavy, but what it did was it in, it allowed him to it increased in his endurance, it increased his recovery time, and you know what? He it, it, it allowed him to work out and do my workouts. When he didn't take the steroids, he didn't work out. He didn't do anything. All he did was eat. I, I got stories. You got to read my book uh, that's sitting on my couch right now. Clemens didn't work out until he took steroids. And he, you know what, look at the numbers when he started taking steroids. Look at his numbers on on my congressional testimonies when he started taking steroids. He bought steroids, he gave them, to, he showed them to me to give to him, then he started working out. Then he lost weight, and then his numbers increased, and then his, his miles per hour increased. He was throwing 99 in 03. He threw, 90, he threw a pitch in Detroit. Going for his 300 game, he threw a 99 mile an hour pitch at the age of 42. No way. No, that's not physical, not not an anatomical possible. So you link that unequivocally to the use of steroids or illegally banned substances? Yes. Okay, so let oh. me just go over. When he, when he had me shoot up his wife in 03, he had a he had a case full of drugs in his in his bathroom. Now, when you say case full of drugs, what are we talking about? What I recognize was growth hormone, but, and it was what Kirk Radonsky used to sell, but he, I forgot. I actually forgot. I mean, I, you know, I didn't, I never lied in the, in the trial, but I actually forgot that he bought the drugs from Kirk, and he got the drugs from Kirk Radonsky. And he had a case full of growth hormone that I was instructed by him with him to shoot up his wife. And I was totally embarrassed about it. Totally embarrassed. Now, had you just his wife, shot his up his wife one time? Or was it more? Well, no, I, he wanted me to shoot his wife up, but actually teach her. So I actually was more teaching and then injecting, and that was it. I never did. I only did it once. But, and was your understanding, though, that you were going to introduce it to how to properly use and administer these substances yeah. so she could do it on her own? Yeah. And Kirk taught me how to do a check. I, I never knew it did a woman. Uh, I never shot a female before. And I was totally embarrassed with him there. You know, she was wearing spandex and tank top, and it's a little intimate. It's an intimate thing to teach. And I, I had to learn another way so it wasn't embarrassing and intimate. I, I had to go from behind uh, and... It, it, now, it's, I did him. I, I shot Clemens over growth hormone, and he was, he was like, he's just sitting there, and he's standing in front of me, and I shoot him up with growth hormone, and then I, he pulls the pants down, I shoot him up with steroids. And but when it comes to a wife or a girlfriend or a girl, it's it's I can't be in that situation. Um, but I'm a little I, humbled that way. It obviously be a little awkward and embarrassing. Now, was anyone present when you shot his wife? Was he also in the room? Oh, he instructed it. He Clemens was there. He instructed it. Okay, so now, with, in the conversation you had with his wife, was it obviously open and apparent that obviously Roger was doing it so it was known? It wasn't as if there was any discussion like, oh, wow, Roger's using or taking controlled substances or doing any of this or using banned stuff? This is when Roger was done. He was retired at the time, and I was training. As I used this place to train him. He would still work out with the guys. Um, I had about six guys in Houston. Andy, me being the main guy, but C.J. Antowski, Andy, and a couple other guys that had, that, you know, the, these guys just brought guys in. I would just train them. They never paid me, but 
Andy was the main guy. Roger was still training with us um, in 03. And then me and Debbie would talk. We would talk in the kitchen quite about our growth hormone, this, that, the other thing. And I did know about growth hormone, but I never took growth hormone. I did take it. I eventually took it. And um, it actually saved my finger. I cut my finger off. And I had, I had like, I had somebody's growth hormone. I think it was Clemens' growth hormone at my house. And I actually took it for seven days um, because the doctor told me, if you can take it, great, but he can't prescribe it. And I said, okay. So I cut my finger off, and I took it for seven days. And you know what? He told me 70%, 30%, 70% chance I'll never be able to use my finger again, my pinky and my left pinky. And I, I need my hands. 70% chance I'm never going to be use, using it again. He goes, it's an iffy surgery. You cut it. I cut it with a chop saw. Um, I was doing carpentry work in my house, and I cut my finger off. So I used the growth hormone for seven days. I had seven days, whatever. Who I think it was Clemens' growth hormone, and I used it. And you know what? My finger is 100% um, better. So did the growth hormone work? I don't know. But Debbie used to ask me about, she was big Hollywood. She was a big page sixth reader. She read all the, the, the latest and greatest. All the Hollywood people are taking growth hormone, all the women. And actually, I knew that growth hormone worked really well for women, for body fat and, and burning body fat and youthful appearance. And this. So I would tell her what I knew, and then she decided she wanted to use it. Clemens came to me and said, you know, you still know that guy, meaning Kirk? I said, yes. Can you get the growth hormone? I said, well, uh, I don't know. Let me call. So I called Kirk. Kirk mailed him out two boxes. I think it cost him like 20, 2400 bucks. Uh, he gave me cash for. Um, so he had two two months supply, and then I was there training. And he called me. He called the intercom me in the pool in the pool house, Cato's house. And I said, yeah. And then he and then the wife was nervous. And the only thing the wife said was, I can't believe you're letting him do this to me. And I actually, for the first time. That's how I knew she had a cesarean. I didn't know. He always he always said, what a great ass she has after four boys. Meanwhile, she had a cesarean. Every kid was a cesarean. So she never gave it, she never gave birth vaginally. So, of course, she had a great ass. You know? <laughs> right. She didn't have, she didn't give out, she didn't, she didn't have childbearing hips. So, bottom line is, that's the first time I learned that, because he lied about that. And then she pulled her pants down, like her spandex down a little bit. That's how I saw this car. And I was behind her, and I reached around. I pinched her fat, her belly button fat, and uh, I injected her. And that's I, I, I showed her everything. I showed her how, how to mix it. It's a procedure. You have to mix growth hormone. You have to clean it with alcohol. Then you have to load the syringe, and then you inject. Um, now, when you were helping her do do all of this and really discuss it with her, during the course of those conversations, did she ever say or confide in you that she had an interest in doing this because she knew her husband Roger was doing it and it worked for him or he was happy with it or how it advanced his career? Like, did any of those kind of statements no. or comments ever come out? No, Adam. What happened the first time and the only time, uh, well, well, one, yes, me and Debbie talked about it a lot. Me and Debbie, we, we used to, we call it coffee time, because I would set up, I would make Roger a shake, I would put out his vitamins, and me and Debbie would talk. Debbie would have a green tea. She, she drank green tea. I made coffee for myself, but I made Roger a shake, and I waited for Roger to come out of the bedroom. The bedroom was on the first floor of the house. We would talk, but nothing about Roger taking anything. The only time the subject came up, was when I was doing when I was showing her how to inject the growth hormone. Was when she looked at him because of the way she I had to touch her. She goes, I can't believe you letting him do this to me. And Roger looked at her. Roger was two feet away in the bathroom, and said, He does it to me. Why can't he do it to you? That's it. There was well, that's no a pretty order. telling statement, though. Yeah. So, well, now let me just go over like the history because I know that you have um, worked with Chuck Knobloch, Andy Pettit, and Roger Clemens, all Yankees. 
What order Mike, did you Mike sign Dan, them on? Grinsley, you, are, you going, are you going on the drug side, Adam? I'm just going on the drug side because I want to ask a very particular question. How did it come up that, was it you would approach the players and say, you know, you can enhance your game, maybe try these substances, or did they approach you? How did it all come about, and in what order? You know what? I never, I talk players out of using steroids. Um, this is this is how it happened. This is skinny. Roger Clemens bought steroids at, at Conseco's house with Conseco. He always Clemens always brought Conseco to every team he ever played on. Conseco was a known steroid guy. Um, obviously had success with steroids. Uh, Clemens always brought him to every team he went on, and you can look that up. Clemens provided steroids to me, and then. What happened was, I, like I said, I made my mistakes. I made mistakes. I should have. I should have said no. I should no. No. I should have said no, but I didn't. I got paid by Clemens. I was his employee outside of the team, and he asked me to inject them, and I did. I shouldn't have done that. Um, then when I came back from Toronto to New York. Clemens brought me to the team. I didn't want to be. I didn't want to. I wanted to be a personal trainer. I didn't want to be part of a team anymore. I didn't want the team. The travel stinks. It's you know. I started a family. I, I didn't want to be part of a team. But Clemens made me part of the Yankees. I did everything for the Yankees. I do batting practice, bullpen catch. I I was everything for the Yankees. And now was this on Yankee did, payroll or Clemens payroll? Um, I got a check from the Yankees, but it was Clemens' money. Okay, that's how so, I got but, me there. I got it. Uh, that was for travel and and insurance reasons. So, but, but who money, could fire you? Either Clemens or the Yankees, or one or the other, or both? Both, both really. If the, Yan if the Yankees didn't want me around anymore, they can say get lost, which actually Cashman tried to do, and I told him to kiss my ass. And then, um, yeah, Clemens could have fired me too. He could have said get lost, but. But, the all, but what itself, happened was all the Yankee players check? gravitated to me. All the players gravitated to me. But I just want to clarify my point. The check, was it was it an actual check endorsed by the Yankees, or was it endorsed by Clemens? It was a New York Yankee check. I, got, I was on the payroll. Okay. But they took, the, the, that check was out of Clemens' check. I, I understand. But, uh, how, you have to, how you have to understand. I, had so a, I was Clemens, traveling with Clemens the team. Clemens reduced his salary to keep you around to do what he needed done through you, and had the Yankees issue the check in that in that manner. Okay, I got yeah, it. Yeah, I had a I had a great career with Toronto. I had a great career with Toronto. I would have been there twenty years. I had a great career with Toronto. I left to be home to take care. Of, I had I had my first son. Um, uh, I was making good money, and I left Toronto to be. Clemens called me. And he said, listen, we, we, you know, we, we, they can have me and you for cheap right now because he wanted to get out of Toronto because Toronto wasn't going to win. And that's when he got his agents. I was there for that conversation. Um, well, I was actually training him, and I was in the meeting. I was in the players' meeting when they were dumping guys. So Toronto wasn't getting better. They were getting worse by the all-star break. So Clemens started making phone calls. I'm out of here. I went out. I went out. I went out. I went out. So I was there for that meeting, and then Clemens, because I gave him steroids, told Cashman in 1999 that he wanted Mac to meet me by by the All Star break. And I said, Clem, I can't. I said I can't leave. I, I got to play his contract. I said they'll ban me. They'll ban me for seven years. That I had to play his contract. And he goes, Oh, so I, so I faxed my contract over to Clemens' agents, and they were like, He's right. He's going to get banned. Uh, for seven years, that's their right. That's how you prevent people from jumping, jump a chip. So Clemens brought me back. He started the the, the groundwork, telling Cashman, yeah, "I need Mac to me. I 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 need Mac to me." His hamstring is growing. I need Mac to me. I need Mac to me. So Cashman called me and he goes, "Well, a player tells me he needs you. He needs you." And I said, "Cash, I already worked three and a half years for the Yankees. I, I, I know the deal." And I, I was there when Cashman was a paper boy. He used to make copies. So we had an open dialogue. Cashman's a bit of a rat. Um, he's, he lied. He lied. He lied in trial. He lied his, his ass off. 
um, and trial about me. Well, I want to get to Yankees and Cashman in, in a second, but just... All right, but just, uh, to answer your question, though, to answer your question, I had a New York Yankee check. I was on the payroll. It came from Clemens' salary, though. Okay. So now... Does that answer your question, Adam? No, I got it. That, that does answer my question. So now let's, let's back up a little bit. So before pulling you over to the Yankees again, in Toronto, you were working with them, I'm assuming, and training them, because you had, you know, two epic years there, Cy, Cy Young worthy... Um, and he supplied the steroids. He, I was going to say, was he shooting and using while you were with him in Toronto? Yes, he supplied them. He got them from Conseco's house in, in Miami. Conseco, so now, your introduction Conseco is a good, he's an interesting character. He, you know what? He definitely got paid by Clemens. Um, he definitely got paid. He, I, I, I talked to Conseco. I was tight with Conseco, very tight. Canseco, when he got brought up from the from the independent league to Chicago, he had 17 home runs in like some, like 20 games. And he told me that he was writing a book. He's going to rat Clemens out. He's going to rat this guy out. So I went to Clemens. I said, you know, Canseco's writing a book. Next thing you know, <laughs> he I was with I've been out with Canseco and Clemens so many times. And then he wrote like one full chapter about how Clemens never cheated on his wife, like. You, if, if you don't have half a brain, that was orchestrated. It was orchestrated. Clemens well, was now, the biggest cheater. He was the biggest cheater on his wife than, than anybody. Now, the thing that's interesting, though, is Conseco is so outspoken about his own use of the steroids. You know, he's written the books. He's done a million shows to the point that people are saying, okay, enough already. And... If he was willing to talk about so many players and so many different teams that endorsed it and went on, why was Clemens a guy he wouldn't just say, yeah, he did this and this is everything else that was going on? Why did he you know choose what? to protect Clemens? That's the one thing that the, the trail doesn't make a lot of sense with. Because he's so over the top, always talking about it, but why not Clemens? You have to figure it out for yourself, Adam, because I don't know legally if I can give you my opinion on that. What I can what I can say is all I can say is exactly why not think about it I would I would I would leave that up to the listeners and the readers why not what my assumption is and is probably right is what you people have to figure out because I don't know because I don't really want to get sued by Conseco. Because he probably would sue me if I said something like inappropriate. Or, but all I know is Clemens flew him down first class. Clemens took care of him. Clemens had him in meetings. Clemens had him this. Clemens had him on every team he ever played for. So, what well, went down? Well, you know what? Conseco will come clean eventually. One day he'll come clean. But. If I had to make an assumption, I, I can't. I don't think I legally can make that assumption on 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 live or radio, TV. I can't. Well, make are you assumption. are you trying to insinuate there's a lot more to their relationship than what we know on the surface? I think I think that's what I'm insinuating, but I'm not saying it. Okay, so I think you have to look at the history. You have to look at the history of Clemens flying him down first class tickets, talking to him prior to the Congress. Talking to, and and if you look at the history, Conseco was on every team Clemens played on. So, I think you have to look at the history and then make your own assumption. Um, yes, I would like to really talk about this, but I can't right now. Is that going to be something that possibly will come up during the course of your civil trial? I. I don't know. I, I think Canseco is, he's dormant right now, too. He's dormant, and he loves the attention. Um, I think, I think um, there, I think there's going to be an expiration date on the, the Clemens Canseco configuration. And once that expiration date is done, then I think you're going to find out, like you said, Canseco's been very outspoken and very, very, um, you know what Canseco got? He got a ticket to lie. He got a ticket to lie because his book came out to be true. And his book came out to be true, a little bit of it, like some of it, if not most of it. So he got a ticket to lie. So then he wrote another book, 
and he lied about me. Me and him went out together. Me and him, I, I, had, I had to take him home. You know how many times I'd take him home with women and, and watch him and, and protect him? And then he said he never even knew me, and he, you know, why would I do this? But he lied about me. He lied about me, which is fine. I'm not, I'm not Jose Canseco. I'm Brian McNamee. I'm a strength coach. Um, so did I have the, do I have the best lawyers on the planet? Yes, I do. Do I have better lawyers than Clemens? Yes, I do. Um, but my lawyers are like, listen, let it go. Of course I'm angry. Of course I, I won't vent. But I can't. I can't. Um, will there be a day when you guys, your, you media types, will find out the true story about Conseco and Clemens? Yes, there will be a day. It's just not now. It's not going to happen now. Um, could I give you my opinion, which is probably right? Yes. But I can't. I'm sorry. Now, I, now are you, are you going to bring like in Conseco to be deposed and ask these kind of questions to him at the deposition? Yeah, Conseco, a, he's a serial liar. He's a serial liar. So do you anticipate calling him into the deposition, into this case? And um, in this I case? don't really know. I, I don't know. But that's up to my lawyers. My lawyers are, like I said, right now they're doing the ancillary depositions, which means they're doing the, uh, the small people. Um, they're getting that out of the way, but we can until they get the see, evidence, until they get what they want. They want the but we evidence. We can expect to see Pettit. We can expect to see Knobloch. And oh, I sat, I sat in the wife. deposition with Pettit. I sat in the deposition with Pettit. Uh, well, I was going to ask you about that. I know it took place a little while back, and here's a question on that. We know initially when the news broke on this, Andy Pettit seemed to come very clean and admitted that you injected him and that he seemed to be aware that you also injected Clemens. And then we all know he, it's a criminal trial. Not from me, though. He wavered yeah. and said that he really was unsure and was 50-50 about that testimony. So which, which version did he give at the deposition? All right. First of all, me and Andy were different from me and Roger. Me and Andy, were, we were tight. I, I saw his kids grow up. I trained his kids, his high school team, his, his kids. Actually, not even high school team. I, I, it, it was a, a different relationship with Andy. Andy knew of Roger's drug use, not through me. Andy let me know of, that he knew of Roger's drug use through other people, if not Roger, and, and Roger. So, in the deposition, for my case, Wait, Andy, Before we get to that, just let's say, what did he tell you when you first had those things, when he said he knew of either through Roger or some of Roger's friends? What was it that he relayed to you that he knew or was told? Well, he conversation, because um, I used to watch ESPN in the mornings, getting the gym ready when I was living in his house. Um, he let me know. I Oh, um, Gary Sheffield said, uh, made a statement to ESPN during the Balco situation. And he made a statement saying somebody should check Roger Clemens' Kool-Aid or he, he, I'm pretty sure there's no, that's not Gatorade he's drinking. Like, statement like the end, and he ran with it. And then I told Andy, and I said, Andy, I said, listen, I said, that's really messed up that he would say that. And Andy said, listen, he goes, he thought he came from Giambi because Roger was always, well, Roger always was a, he was a big, um, how do you say it? He was a big, he, he was star-crossed with Hollywood people. He was, always wanted to be that person. He always wanted to be hanging out with McConaughey. You know, he had McConaughey in California hanging out. He, he wanted to hang out with movie stars. He was big into that. And Jason Giambi was, you know, he was, he was a, you know, a page six guy. And he always wanted to hang out with Giambi. So Andy just said to me, he goes, I think that comes from Giambi because Giambi and Sheffield talk and Roger and Giambi hang out and they, they you know, they pick up women. And he goes, I think that, that came from Giambi. And, and that's why Sheffield said what he said. Because Sheffield was making a racial thing. And that, Sheffield took steroids. And, and the thing is, he took them, he said he didn't, but he, he was making it a black thing. And then Andy... Andy, during the Balco, that was in 04, this is in 04, I was training Andy um, full-time, and he said he thinks it came from 
um, Giambi because Roger told Giambi, and also I was I was there with with Conseco when when Clemens told Conseco he won he won two 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 Cy Youngs on on steroids. I was there. I was there. I heard it. It was in a, a bar. I was actually hanging. I was protecting Conseco's wife, and that's what I did. I protected people and. I went out. I didn't drink. I didn't, you know, I wouldn't consume alcohol. You know, if I wanted to drink, I drank by myself. And But when I was out, I was doing the job. I was always working. But that's how that came up. came up because um, Andy knew. So I never told Andy that Roger took steroids. I never told Andy anything, but Andy knew. Andy, so Andy actually, made it he pretty clear to you. Me, I mean, he asked me if I injected Roger, and I actually said, yes, I did. I injected him. And I I injected Roger, you know, probably a hundred times, but I said, yeah, a couple times. That's all. And I talked to Andy. I had taken growth hormone for two years, and then he said he was doing it. So I made the decision to help him. Okay, now when he told you that he was doing it, so he had been doing it on his own prior to even having you start your regimen that you're going to do with him, your regimen. Which person? And Andy Pettit we're talking about now. No, no, Andy. For all, all I know is what I know um, about Andy. Andy. Okay, because maybe Andy I misunderstood. Made, Andy so asked said me that, about it. Then when he finally asked, like, how did it come up with Andy to start using? Did he approach you, or did you bring yeah. it up to him? He called me. I was at my house in Breezy Point. He called me. Okay, and what was the he whole was reason? He, he was in He was going on the DL. Huh? Like, how did he know to ask you? Was it through Roger? Well, he, yeah, because that was in that was in two thousand and two, and the conversation with Roger was in two thousand and one. I think that Roger told him that he was taking growth hormone and steroids, and then Andy came to me in this like ten feet away from the conversation he had with Roger, and I said, Andy, I said, it's one, it's illegal. Two, I know how you are, and he goes, Oh, it's illegal. Then forget about it. And I was pissed off because Andy was. Andy was having a catch with CJ right before we got done with our morning workout. Then we then we pitch and then we work. Then we do weights. That's how I had my my program run. And I was pissed off because meanwhile I didn't want CJ to hear the conversation because for three years I've been telling CJ not to take steroids. So I'm like, fuck. I'm like, dude, you're. I said I was pissed off. I was pissed off at Roger for telling Andy, and I was pissed off at, at Andy. And then I told Andy, I said, Andy, dude, it's illegal. And because Andy was like, dude, you tell me, you tell me how to take vitamins, you tell me to take protein shakes, and you don't tell me to take this. And I said, Andy, it's illegal. It's it's wrong. He goes, oh. Then he goes, forget about it. But I was like, hush, hush, because I don't want CJ to hear it. And CJ was on the other side of the gym. And you know what? CJ out of 400 players, CJ backed me. CJ really went to bat for me. Sagi went to bat for me, and I was really taken back by the fact that Roger would tell him that. So now, prior to that, as far as you know, Andy never used anything. That was his first to try to maybe use. As far as I'm concerned, as far as I know, if Andy Pettit came out today and said he's been taking steroids since he was eight years old, I would not be surprised. But. As far as I know, Andy, yes, that's the first time. He didn't know what growth hormone was. He thought it was a vitamin, and that's why. He, and then when I said, "Dude, I know how you are. It's illegal," and I didn't push it. I was not a pusher. I was not a drug dealer. I did not sell it. I didn't make money from it. All I did was my job prescription was make sure the guys are healthy on the field, off the field, in the gym, out of the gym at all times. So. How I got involved with it in New York was I knew Kirk Radomsky sold good stuff. He got it from pharmacies. He got it from doctors. But guys were taking stuff from Mexico with horses on it. and it, So I said, yeah, you should talk to Kirk. And then Sagi, who was playing somewhere else, said, listen, Mac, you're in New York. Why don't you deal with Kirk? I don't, you know, because then Sagi would have got it for me for the player. That was Grimsley. And then... You know, vice versa. So he goes, Mac, you're in New York. Just deal with Kirk yourself. So that's how I got involved with Kirk. So and you then I go to the Kirk to get, to get, the, to get the, the substances, and then you would meet up with Clemens and do whatever you had to do. Well, after I hooked up Grimsley with Kirk, 
I met Kirk where you used to, he knew of a friend from, from Lexus, and I wanted to buy a Lexus. I didn't deal with Kirk originally. I put the player in contact with Kirk um, Radowski, and Kirk did the steroids, and he got the good steroids, you know, like the safe steroids. These guys are already taking steroids. So Clemens came to me and said, hey, I know you know a guy. So the players are talking. They had a talk. And up until up until Clemens coming to me in New York in 2000, he goes, hey, you know a guy. I don't know how he knew that I knew a guy because I never knew a guy. I never knew a steroid dealer. I never dealt with steroids because prior to that, Clemens already got his, he always got his own steroids and presented them to me. So I said, yeah, I know a guy. I, I guess I know a guy. And then I went to Kirk for the first time for steroids, and I said, what does a starting pitcher take? And he gave me a bunch of stuff, and he talked about growth hormone. And then I went to Clem, and then I said, Clem, there, there is this new thing, because I already knew he took Winstroll, and he wouldn't take that, because he got the abscess. He got an abscess from Winstroll. He said, you don't want to take Winstroll. You wanted to take steroids. And then I said, I said, there's this growth hormone stuff that's like the new thing. I said, do you want it? And he said, yeah. And then he, he gave me $2,500 cash, and that, that more than covered the, the drugs. And Kirk put it together, and I, I gave it to him. And he had it, and I, I told him what the program was. It's like steroid. The steroid shot was once every seven days or ten days, and the growth hormone was every two days on and one day off. So I had, I had, to, I had to shoot him up. So this was a really rigorous kind of thing that you would be shooting him on a regular basis. So when you say you gave him over 100 shots, it's easy to see how you get to that number so quick. Yeah, 100 is just bullpark. Could be 200, could be, could be 50. So but let's get back to Andy again. We're, we know what, well, the question I asked you previously is we know what he initially said and then he testified obviously differently at the criminal case, which really did hurt the criminal case in a big way when he gave an ambivalent answer, basically saying, eh, well, maybe 50-50, I misunderstood what Roger was talking about, if he took or didn't take or whatever. So what does he, what does he end up saying at the deposition? Which version does he go with? Do you know what? He, he put it to, well, let me say this. I was a New York City cop. I was a ball player. Um, I think Andy did the right thing probably what I, I probably would have done the same thing um, I would have lied and Andy did lie but in the deposition he didn't waver from what he said all um, I, I can't talk about the deposition I can't I was there um, it was over five hours um, he didn't waver he didn't he didn't do what he did in the trial he just said if I said it, then it's the truth. That's that's really all I can say about that. He so he basically didn't... went with his first statement where he said Roger did use, and he admitted that he himself did use. No, I don't think he told him. I don't think Roger came up at all uh, in the deposition. But, Adam, I can't talk about the deposition. That's that's privileged information. That's I can't talk about that. Um. Well, uh, well if you're asking me, did Clemens, Roger come up he, in the deposition? Did Roger Clemens come up in the deposition? No, it didn't. He didn't. I don't. I don't believe he did. I don't remember that. I just sat there. I, me and Andy shook hands, and you know, it. It's not a good place for me and Andy. It's not. We, we're not. We're friends, and I'm friends with his family. But he did. You know, I know Andy lied. He did lie a couple times, but um, as far as his own participation in drug use and and going back to answering questions based on his testimony at trial with Clemens um, were totally different. They were totally different. And all I can say is me being an ex-cop and me being an ex-ball player or ball player because I still play and I'm pretty damn good. But the thing is, I would do the same thing. I would do the same thing, protect the ball player. He's in a union. He's in a ball player's union. That's why, out of 400 athletes, I only had two guys that backed me up. You had C.J. Nikowski kiss my ass 
telling people if it wasn't for Mac, I'd be in the missile report. If it was, and then and then Sergey said Mac is you know Mac is Mac. And 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 see, but where are the other 398 other ball players that I told guys taking steroids? What hurt me the most was Doc Holliday retired the other day. That hurt me. I was really close with Doc, and I trained Doc. Well, he was 21 years old. He's 36 years now. There's stuff in Major League Baseball that that other trainers are still doing that I taught because players come and they go. And the stuff that I taught is still being used in Major League Baseball. But, you know, we focus on Roger Clemens because Roger Clemens said I, I never even trained him. I wasn't his trainer. That mother freaker, he had me on private flights to train him. So where are the other trainers yet? Where, did, where are those trainers? I, I, I was never his personal trainer. Where are those trainers? Where are they? He is, Roger Clemens is, if he's talking, he's lying. And if he had to tell the truth, he'd never open up his mouth. That's Roger Clemens. And well, you know it, what? It, it, it appears quite obvious that you still have a lot of strong feelings over what went on between you and Roger. Let me get back to, like, the Yankee uh, team back then. You also uh, had some interactions with Chuck Knobloch, and he's come out, and he's also admitted that that okay. was true. All right. Now, now, when did all that happen in the process? Like, how did you get introduced to Chuck, and and how did that all come about? Knobloch, Knobloch had a personal trainer. Him and Bernie, Bernie Williams had a personal trainer, um, Raffi. And I think Raffi actually works for the Yankees now. Raffi, Raffi was a good good trainer, knowledgeable, and Chuck was damn and then he saw my routine. I had morning workouts. It was optional. I had, and I started out with Clemens and Pettit, and then it turned into six guys before we started spring training at nine o'clock. So at eight o'clock, we were in the backfield in Tampa, and then Chuck ended up firing Raffy because Raffy wanted, I don't know, money and something, something. So Chuck, Chuck came to me and he goes, "You're my guy. I want you to train me." And Chuck never paid me. And when he was living in Manhattan, he never paid me. Um, cost me thousands of dollars to train Chuck. Um, I got him a gym. I got him this. I got him that. Um, then I trained Chuck, and I I was his biggest cheerleader. I had you know I had a psych psychotherapist work with him, um, and that's that was it. I worked with whoever wanted me to work with him, and. Chuck came to me and he goes, I got rid of Raffi and I'm going to work with you. I said, all right. Okay, so now how did, how did any uh, use of illegal substances ever come up with, with Chuck? Uh, Chuck was very good friends with Grimsley and Charlie Wansowitz. They used to go out. They used to take ecstasy. They used to take drugs, um, body drugs. Um, I used to go out because I like to go out. Um, but Grimsley, because I got Grimsley hooked up with Kirk, um, Grimsley and Chuck were very close, and that's how he asked me about growth hormone because he had a throwing pro problem. He couldn't throw to first base. And then I said, I don't really know. I didn't take the drug. I don't know. Guys like it. I mean, Stanton took it. He Stanton said he loved it. Pettit said he loved it. Look, like, look at the numbers when Pettit came off the DL. He, and that's why he took it again, without my knowledge. And I said, I, I don't know. I really don't know. But, yes, I can get it. And then I got it, and then Chuck took it. And it didn't help him, obviously. He actually, he had for the first month of the year, he did great. And then once he went to Minnesota, he got, he got trashed. And then his, he was hitting like 350. He had 10 stolen bases. I said 10 stolen bases a month. You know, it's 60 stolen bases. He got 10. You know, he had 11. And he got 11 stolen bases. He was hitting 340. And then he went to Minnesota. And the, the, they freaking, they brought in, like, the whole whole university in Minnesota to sit in left field. And they crushed them. They were throwing things out. And Bobby Cock, uh, the, the Minnesota manager at the time, came out with Chuck. And they had to talk to the fans to leave him alone. After that, he was done. You know, he was a mental mess. So, did the growth hormone help him? I think it did. I don't know. 
but that was it. He took it. He just took it for a couple of months. He, didn't, he wasn't a drug user. He wasn't a steroid user. I mean, he was more of a you know a social drug user. Uh, but now, unlike Clemens, he when he was asked about it, he owned up to it, admitted that he did use, and basically corroborated what you had said, and said he would have said it. It's really just Clemens has been the one denying it up to date. All right. Well, Adam, listen, I'm I'm a highly highly intelligent person. I really am, and I got the paper to prove it, and I got the I got the experience to prove it. I'm 46 years old. Who do you believe? You well, think Clemens I'm here just asking questions. I mean, I think the record speaks for itself. Well, I mean, I, I'm I here. I'm it. here. I'm here. But I'm also here. But uh, that's how I am. Do I don't think there's many believe? people that doubt that Clemens was involved. You're, you're, in you're a radio host, and you have to make a decision on who you believe. Do you think Clemens did not take steroids? I, I, if you're asking me just a comment now about what my opinion is, I, I think that he did. Okay. I, I think if you look over the evidence and you look at all the testimony, not just your testimony, but all the corroboration as well, I, I think it's pretty clear. Then you're, that, that then, he, then you're a smart man. You're a smart man. But, but you are know what, you asking me why Clemens is 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 deny deny deny? I I gave I gave Clemens the answer to the test. I gave him the answer to the test. I I got him off. I got him off. Me personally got him off. So now he's obviously trying to protect his legacy and ensure that he'll get into the Hall of Fame, which I think at this point is going to be doubtful for all the players such as him and Bonds and McGuire and the Sosas and the Palmeros that all fall into that category. Um, unless they do a whole change in how the election uh, is going to be held and how they consider all that stuff. But let me just ask you some stuff. With all these obvious, there were several Yankee players we just discussed. What was the, the, the view of the Yankee management and ownership at that time? The Steinbrenners, Cashman, you know, were they aware that this was going on in the clubhouse, that this was being done, and it was like as long as we're winning and the dynasty's rolling and we're getting championships to look the other way, as long as the players yes. could produce? What was what was the, the atmosphere and, and the overall opinion from the Yankee organization? They, first of all, you look at all the, the best players at that time, which the Yankees signed, were all steroid years. They were all drug users. They, they, Jason Giambi's contract, they took the steroid clause out. Um, nobody, nobody ever talks about that. Why, why did they take it out? Don't take steroids. Get that out. They took it out. Brian Cashman came to me personally and said to me, we don't care what they do, what they take, as long as it doesn't get back to us. He denied that. But he's a liar. Brian Cashman is a liar. Um, and also, Brian Cashman has to have relationships with agents and the Hendricks. That's why Brian Cashman lied on the stand, um, saying I was I uh, was insubordinate. Are you fucking kidding me? I was the best employee they had, and and I was getting paid by clients. I was insubordinate. He he lied because he has to have relations with agents because that's how they get deals done and that's how, you know, they save money. And Cashman lied. He lied. And in Cashman, I got the phone records. I got, me and Cashman talked for probably two months prior to signing Clemens. We talked. And he actually did me a huge favor because I helped him out. Um, I helped him out with Clemens, helped him out with Pettit, helped him out with their, their new strength coach, which they ended up firing. And I told I told Cashman I said they're gonna fire you, dude. He, you know the players are gonna revolt, and they revolted, and they ended up firing this guy that had a three year, three hundred thousand dollar contract, which is above and beyond monies. But Cashman was the guy. He signed the signature. He signed off on that. So that 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 little clown that got fired. Then he starts starts ripping me out of nowhere. Um, but. Toronto also came to me, their management came to me about steroids, and they said, we don't care as long as we don't find out. As long, so as, base, it back, as long as it get back to us. So that the, baseball, was the, the baseball overall view was, it's all good until it, 
it, it hits the fan and it comes out in public, then everybody's going to scamper away because they don't want to be tied to it. But as long as it was going good and the team was prospering and home runs are being hit and the park's being filled with fans, it was all good, basically. Uh, yeah. And you know what? Silly, silly too. He, he, he's serious. So much your fault as any is. Telling me him, George Bush, uh, 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 you know what? They're all at fault. They they let it happen. They let it happen. They wanted it to happen, and it happened. And they they didn't care. But guess what? It happened. Well, the, the, the question in. is, it, it became so widespread and so prevalent that people knew what was going on. You know, a question that I've always wondered, and I'm sure a lot of people think this too, is, you know, is there a way or do the players have a way to beat the random testing? Like, there's a way knowing, like, okay, if they're going to test oh, me to these things, I can beat it. And are they ever tipped off? Like, oh, you know, the Adam, quote, quote, Adam, random um, testing, yes. it's going to be yes, done next they week. Are, was, there is no random testing. They are tipped off. And, Adam, I can shoot you in the ass right now with the strongest dose of testosterone, and you can pass the test tomorrow. So, so how, is that, how would that be done? Yeah, it's done through, um, what do you mean, casting the test? Like, yeah, how would you do it? So let's suppose uh, I'm that player. Yeah, it, you just shot me in the butt. There are, there are companies, injection. there are, there are local GNCs, mom and pop GNCs that sell, all they do is sell drug testing test kits. Um, hair follicle tests, urine tests, all you gotta do is drink shit, then you drink it again, then you drink it again. And you'll pass the test the next day. Um, I have it here. I have it in my, uh, right in front of me. So now, um, are the players actively using this right now in baseball? Well, they're, I'm pretty sure they're aware of it. If they're taking drugs, they're aware of it. I, I'm not smarter than anybody else. If you're cheating, and that's that's the motto. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. And so, um, yeah, why wouldn't they be? I'm not, I'm not the smartest guy on the planet. I'm and not, now, what about the All I know is I, I just know. Now, what about the tip-offs? Like you said a minute ago, too, when I asked you that this oh, yeah. thing is a random baseball, test. They fucking tip, because they tip guys off. They don't want guys to fail. They tip them off. Hey, listen, um, it's Monday. On Thursday, you're going to get tested. Guess what? You're going to pass. So what about a guy like Ryan Braun, when he was so adamant that, oh, I didn't do it, I wasn't this, and then, obviously, he just accepted this ban the second time around for the You know what? Uh, I can only speak as as, as a civilian. Um, Ryan Braun did what he what he had to do, and he got caught. Um, that's it. And then he owns up there. Now, what about A Rod? A Rod is the now the new poster boy for steroids. You know what? I can, I, can help, I, I can help A Rod. I can help him. And his lawyers have called my lawyers. Uh, I can help him. I know A Rod a little bit. I don't really care for him personally. I don't care for him. And why is uh, that? I, I'm just, as a person, I don't care for him. Um, but my lawyers don't want me to talk to their lawyers. I, I could help them with with the Major League thing. I don't I don't agree with what Major League Baseball did. I don't agree with their investigation team. Mullen is a scumbag. Um, I, really, I really don't agree with what they did to A-Rod. I think the Yankees run baseball because they have the biggest draw anywhere. And I think I think they colluded with C League to to really hurt A Rod. Um I I know A Rod a little bit. I, I, I shook his hand, I met him. Um I'm not a fan of his. I don't know him personally. What do you think baseball did I do really a witch think hunt? he's been wrong. You think they uh, went on a witch hunt with A Rod? I think they they definitely colluded to really, really get rid of A-Rod. That's but right. now, let's ask the other flip side of that, though. It seems like there's a witch hunt. They're trying to really give him a huge ban. But do you think he was a, a user over a very prolonged period of time? You know what? I don't know. Legally, I don't want to get sued by A-Rod. I, I mean, I have my opinion, but I don't want to get I don't want A-Rod to sue me. I'm, my opinion is my opinion. I, I, I don't want to get... He rod the sue me. I, well, I mean, I he's openly come to, out and said he took at different times when he played with different teams. I think when he was in Texas and so on. But do you know of him using when he was with the Yankees? You know what? If you hit one home run, are you a home run hitter? If you take one steroid, are you a steroid user? You have to look at it that way. 
Um, and I can get a lot bolder with that and a lot, a lot, a lot like X-rated. I think, in my opinion, I think no one's used for the first time. And I don't think, and I think once you use it, always a user. And you can date it back to inception. So, if you look at the facts, the facts are that Miami Institute, right next to the Miami University, we're now college players and high school players. So if you look back, and also I played against a Rock. I played against his high school. Um, he played. He played on one of the top five teams in the country. I played against that high school, and I know for a fact that that whole high school was, was taking steroids, highly lakes. And I know for a fact that that was the culture. That was the culture. And you know what? As a player that I played at my level, and I was the best at what I did when I played, if I had known, I would have taken steroids. I would have. I just Do you think, nothing. just like you're saying, baseball is turning you know, a blind eye to it, just like the Yankees, you, you seem to be intimating, did also? You think it's also like that in college, that college is also endorsing it as a if we don't know, don't don't look, don't ask kind of situation where you uh, just don't get caught. More, college, there's more of a, there's more of a strange, there's, there's, they're, they're more policed there. No, I can't say that about college. I can't. So that now, would be a personal thing. You know, a lot of people around, you know, it, it's very obvious that friends seem to turn their other friends on into this, like people around Clemens seem to be users just like he was for the most part, because you see your friend having the success, you see how his numbers are improving, and it would only be natural to say what's part of your regiment, what, 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 what are you doing that works, and then they find out, I guess. So I always thought what's interesting now is a lot of people that were very close to A-Rod on the team, Melky Cabrera, who then was let go by the Yankees and it came out he was using... Uh, you know, there's been speculation, you know, uh, Robinson Cano was very close with Moki Cabrera and so on. Do you think uh, that Robinson Cano's name at any point is going to surface in this steroid or illegally banned substance discussion? And is that a reason why maybe the Yankees didn't take on another 10-year contract with him, thinking that something may be coming out or down the line involving Robinson Adam, Cano? Adam, that's, that's a great question. And I'll, I'll tell you what I told Howard Stern about A-Rod. As as one, a fan. Two, I'm not a fan of any team. I'm a fan of players. Two, being strength and conditioning coach. Three, um, being in the health profession. Um, you hope not. I said this about Arod. I said I really hope not. And then if it's so then I hope they tell the truth, and I hope they just own up to it. And then that's what I said about A-Rod. I said, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I hope if, 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 if Cano, for some reason, and you could be right. You could be right. He could be, he could be with Biogenesis or Balco. He could be taking stuff. Why wouldn't you? Um, that's what you have to do to compete. It's just so much easier now to pass the test. But if so, I just hope they come, you know, they come clean and do the right thing. That's that's my standard public answer. Just come clean. You know what? The fans will love you. Come clean. You know what? The fans want good ball. And if, if you have to take drugs to compete, then that's what you have to do. I mean, like I said, if I knew, I, if I knew about steroids in, in, in college, I would have taken them. I would have. I I I would have, because you know what? Every I was the best. I was the best at what I did, but everyone else was taking steroids. I I couldn't compete with those. You can't compete. It's not a level. It's not a level playing field. It's not. So, it so really does there are ways to the, do it. The, the abilities. So now we talked about the Yankees. We talked about the Steinbrenners as owners and Cashman as the GM, and obviously them looking the other way. Let's go right into the clubhouse. We know about the players. You know, Joe Torre just got elected to the Hall of Fame as a player, and and mostly really in part because of his being a great manager with the Yankees and winning all those championships. 
Now, yeah. obviously, you're in the clubhouse. You see what's going on. You see all the interaction with the players, the coaching staff. Joe really had a close, you know, thumb on all, you know, all the activities I, in the clubhouse. How, I how much Joe's did Joe know? Many a times. How, how much did Joe know, and did Joe just look the other way also? Well, one, as a manager, you have to look the other way, and two. He does. He he had his finger on a pulse of, so he knew. Um, I was. It was in Detroit. I was five feet away from Joe and Knobloch, and Knobloch was taking a an amphetamine. And then Joe. All Joe said was, "Yep." He you no. Know, he he told Knob. He goes, Knobloch, you're in the lineup. He goes, "All right." He goes, and Knobloch said, "I got a bean up." And he goes, "Yep. I remember those days." Uh, being up man taking an, an amphetamine and Joe admitted to yep I remember those days so I've been in Joe's office with him and Joe me and Joe look me up and Joe we got into arguments we got into fights I had to take shit I had to take a lot of hits for team for teammates and um, Joe you know what it's you know but you don't want to know it, that that was the mentality, and that's what I was told. Uh, as long as we don't know, it's fine. As long as it doesn't get back to us, we're fine. So Joe, going through the 70s and the 80s, the 60s and 70s, as a player, he knew. He knew. They were taking steroids in the 70s. They were taking greens. They were drinking, oh, they called it red juice. They, he, he knows. And you know what? Why wouldn't you want your player to do that? You want your player to be at the best. So do it. Do it. Just don't let me know about it. So this so was back. prevalent through the, whole, through the whole clubhouse, from the trainers to the coaching staff to the manager. Oh, the cast trainers. In, to trainers the owners. Toronto, Brown, giving Brown, out it was just, we're talking they up were giving out the amphetamines. Amphetamines. They were giving them out to the pitchers. They were giving them out. And this is all banned stuff we're talking about. Yeah. So knowing all of that, do you think like, wow, look at this. You were doing your job as a trainer, doing it well, and you're doing nothing different than everybody else basically, not only just in the Yankee clubhouse but in baseball, and here you are being singled out and vilified by a lot of the press for you know this what? Whole situation. I, I, how do you respond I, to that? Does it make you angry? Does it, you know, how do you feel about that? You know, first of all, I was the best at what I did, um, training-wise. Secondly, uh, I got mixed feelings. Um, yeah, I'm not the only fucking trainer that that, that got involved with steroids or gropamon or amphetamines. Um, everyone else skated. There were a lot worse guys than me. Um, I never pushed it, but... Uh, I think ethically, morally, I feel bad about it because I have children and I have to own up to my mistakes and I have to set an example and I have to make a, I have to make a right out of a wrong. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make a right out of a wrong and I'm trying to tell my story which just hasn't been heard, haven't talked about it, haven't released the book. Haven't gone on shows. Haven't done interviews. I've, I I just need to make a right out of a wrong, so people in my position, like the National Strength and Conditioning Association, they they love to talk to me, but they don't want to hear me. They I gave a lecture last year at Delphi. They everybody wants to meet me. They don't want to hire me. They don't want to talk to me. They think I'm um, like this big drug dealer. I was not a drug dealer. I never made money. I never sold anything. I made my house. I built. I built my house. I rent my house. Um, the, the house I live in. Um, I pay for my kids. Um, I'm 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 scuffling, but I have to own up to my mistakes. So my mistakes, owning up to them, hopefully will prevent the the next thirty year old or twenty five year old guy that gets in my position, so they don't make the same mistakes. So, and so that was the culture. The culture of the game was steroids. So athletes and kids listening to this interview, 
And I really just want to say I want to thank you for you giving us an enormous amount of time. You've been really raw, right to the point, answering everything that I asked you without even hesitating. And I appreciate that because you're, you're really being candid. And that's really how you get to the heart of matters like this. And that's really how I think you educate the public in the best way. So having the floor right now, Brian, if you could send a message out there to the athletes that are listening to this, that are in junior high school working to hopefully get that big high school career, then a college career, then a pro career, all the kids, what, what would be your message to them about what you, if anything, would have changed or done differently? And just a message for them, what they should be looking out for. All right. Um, Adam, like I said an hour ago, I, I don't know what... What you have to do is you have to be, you have to get educated to what's going on in the in the high school college level. One, two. I think you need to work hard. Um, you know, work on work on your your your. You have to work hard on what you're not good at. Don't work on what you're good at. Um, get a good trainer or get or get the knowledge of, of how you need to work. But when when that, that high school or college player reads about this guy at, at Florida State or Miami and uh, or, you know, whatever, is throwing 100 miles an hour or hitting 50 home runs, but he's taking steroids, it's really hard. If that's a hard question to answer because I don't know what I would do. I told you that an hour ago. I don't know. All I know is I educate, inform, decision is going to be made by the athlete. So do I recommend it? No. But I understand competition. I understand, listen, you're, you're a shortstop, I'm a shortstop. I'm taking this, you're not. We're both, that, we're both the same players. But if I'm taking X and you're taking nothing, I'm better than you. So it, it's it's you have to talk about you have to speak. I have to speak and lecture about the moral issue. Make a moral moral decision. Make a uh, you know a proper decision on what you're going to do. Um, so I can really that's a tough question for me to answer right now. Uh, I, I think I think you answered it fine. I mean, just out of curiosity, because you do train, you're very familiar with the use of different drugs. Do you think that the use of performance enhancing drugs are any worse? than, say, a lot of the over-counter drugs that people take or antidepressants? You know what? No. They're not. Uh, I, I know that. I know that for a fact. They're really not. We take them in to everything in moderation. Um, they're really not. Uh, you know, we, we talk about all, all the drugs athletes get, like me, myself, all my injuries, cortisone shots, cortisone shots, that's steroid. Steroids, steroids, steroids. They keep giving me painkills, painkills, painkills. Are you kidding me? It's the same stuff. It really no is. I mean, I really, I really think the biggest, the, the biggest performance enhancing drug, performance enhancing drug is amphetamines. It really is. It's like cocaine. You're your own cocaine. So wow. obviously you're going to be up. You're going to be, you know, you know that, that's. You go with you go on bi coastal, you go on west coast, east coast, central, you you got day games, night games, yeah. Popping in amphetamine. You're fucking you're wide awake. Okay, wide I got awake, just... good reactions, good I mean, the reactions are better and baseball's a reaction game, you know, see the ball, hit ball. Um steroids are secondary to that. Okay, I got they really you. are. Just a couple quick questions. I know in the past you had said you challenged Roger Clemens to take a lie detector about uh, his positions and what he's testified to. Did he ever follow up and ever agree to do that or or do it and try to offer it in any way in any of the cases? I, I offered to pay for it. He, his comments, I think they were on, um, what, what was the show he did, 60 Minutes? or something like that. He minutes. said that he didn't believe that they worked. He said that they're tainted or he did not he he, he denied it. He denied one to do it. Uh, I challenged him to it. He he said that they don't think they work and something else, something else. 
Now, what about the flip side? Have you ever taken a lie detector test about what your statements are to show you had nothing to hide and, hey, look, I'm willing to do it. Why don't you do it too? No, actually, I have taken a lie detector test, but it wasn't about this. It was, it was about something else. Um, Would you be but, willing to do a lie detector test about the testimony that you offered about everything relating to Clemens and his use and everything else? All right, tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. Absolutely. Well, that speaks volumes that you say that you would. Uh, one last question I wanted to just ask about the whole Clemens mess. Um, you know, your whole lawsuit uh, with the defamation case, um, obviously, you know, you're going to be seeking damages to your reputation, um, to your character, and so on. Uh, and that's going to probably be, the, to me, the more difficult part of proving your case uh, in, in the Brooklyn Federal Court. Because I think you're going to be able, once the evidence comes in, to show that Clemens lied, his reputation's at issue, there's all these character flaws and credibility issues, and that he was a user. But then the next jump to actually get damages out of the case, uh, you have to prove that there was actually damage that cost you losses in terms of your character being attacked, your reputation being attacked, such as maybe not getting work now or things like that. So how do you plan to present like the losses in, in terms of your reputation? Or you, would you just be happy with a verdict coming back that says, they believe that they just side with you and believe you, so you get that vindication, like, hey, you know what? We know you were telling the truth. Yeah, it, the last statement is correct. Um, I don't care about money. Um, you know what? I make a dollar. I spend a dollar. I provide for my children. I provide for my family. Um, I am physically able to do that, but obviously not not a, a, the lifestyle they used to because of Clemens. So, do I expect money from Clemens? No. I, do I care less? Would I like my lawyers to get paid because I owe them money? Yes. Uh, well, let's suppose Clemens right now made the offer that, you know what, let's settle this case right now and the settlement would be, you know, you're not going to get money out of this, but I'll admit today that everything you said was true, that I did use um, and your representations were correct. That's good. That's good. I'm good with that. You know what? I don't want nobody's money. I want my own money. I make my own money. I have a good product. Um, and right now my hands are tied a little bit. Uh, obviously, you know I can do a lot with a book. I can do a lot with um, doing shows. I can do a lot with, um, you know, I, how would you put it, whoring myself. I can whore myself out. Um, but I won't. I won't do that. Um, I have too much, too much respect for myself, too much respect for my products, um, my product being my training and my knowledge. Um, if Clem is staying clean and said, you know what, let's, uh, let's uh, wipe our hands and, you know, I just, I want to take care of my lawyers. My lawyers are great. Um, I do owe them money. Um, if that got, if that, if that was a settlement and I walk away with nothing, I'll do it. One last question. What's next for Brian McInerney? What's next? What's next? Um, nothing. I just train and uh, I got a very, very small clientele and right now things are good. I'm, I'm improving lives. I improve lives every day. I make people better every day. And I'm honest about my past. I made mistakes. And I'm no saint. I'm no saint. But With that. I teach that, I use that, and um, I'm making people better every day. Well, with that said, Brian, I appreciate your time. You gave us an enormous amount of time to go into this entire uh, episode of your life and, and this important segment of baseball history. And I, I can't thank you enough for being as candid as you were. Uh, I know it was a difficult topic to discuss, and you also have a pending case. But I just, again, want to thank you. And uh, everybody, that was the uh, one and only Brian McEnane about speaking about this entire episode that we've all heard a million times. And there's a lot more to come, I'm sure, in the next coming months and years as your case with Clemens gets wrapped up and baseball deals with this issue that's still out there and still left unresolved with A-Rod and other players. Brian, thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, you're welcome. Look forward, and I uh, wish you luck with your case. Thank you. Okay, take care.